Let's configure Logic Driver to support network replication, and we'll do so by continuing off of the Transition Evaluation Types tutorial, where we change the color of the cube on player overlap. But this time, the color change will be replicated across the network by executing state logic on all clients. Start by opening up the cube character tutorial actor. And the first thing we want to do is clear out the state machine that we used previously. Then we want to add in a state machine component. It's important to use a component because it is the only way to support replication with Logic Driver. If you use the variable approach, replication will not work. You can configure various network settings through components, the most important ones being network tick, transition, and state configuration. And through these, you can set which domain the state machine is allowed to operate in, whether it's the client, server, or client and server. Network tick allows the state machine to tick in one of those domains, if tick is enabled on the state machine. If it's disabled, this has no effect. Network transition configuration is responsible for determining who is authoritative over your state machine, since transitions determine your state. If it is set to client, that means the client will process the transition. If it evaluates it true, the client will then take that transition, and it will inform the server, which will broadcast that transition to all other proxies. If you set it to server, then the server is solely responsible for determining this, and it will broadcast the change again to all proxies. Client and server is not recommended to use, since that basically says both client and server is authoritative, and you may have the transitions kind of fighting for which passes and what doesn't. So don't use this unless you know exactly what you are doing. When setting this value, it's important to take into account who owns the state machine. If a player owns the state machine, then you have the option of setting it to client. However, if it is a server-owned state machine, such as an AI character, then you have to set it to server because there is no authoritative client that the server will listen to. Network state configuration allows you to determine where the state logic will execute. So for our case, it'll be where the set color function is called from its given state. And we want that to execute on the client. And you want to take this into account too when setting this for your own state machines. If it is a, a visual effect, uh, you probably want it to be client side only. Um, if it's more important authoritative processing, you may want that on the server, or you may want to execute on both. It is up to you and your use case. For our case, we'll put the client since it is a visual effect only. We'll also leave this network transition configuration set to server because our cube is not player owned, it is server owned. Additionally, we're going to have to check include simulated proxies. And that is because since it is a server owned state machine and is broadcasting a change to all connected clients, all players, we need to account for the simulated proxies version of them. And you would want to use this in this event or in the event that you have a player owned state machine and you want specific logic on that player owned state machine to also execute on its simulated proxies through other clients. Let's set the correct class we're going to use, which is cube color changer, and let's tell it to start on begin play. Now let's open up the state machine itself, and we're going to make a couple more changes here, and that's in the transitions going from green to red. Previously, we check just the first player character. We can't do that anymore, and the reason for that is because there are two characters, or more, and we are going to be evaluating this from the server. So in this case, the server would only take player index 0 when we actually want to take all player indexes. So let's simplify this. Let's do it by getting the class and checking if that class is a character. And if it is, we will just evaluate to true. then do the same thing on the other transition. Okay, so let's go to our play settings and let's start off with play as client, number of players two. Okay, so this client goes up and it switches, perfect. This one comes up and he switches too. 
Let's try the same thing, but as a listen server. Okay, so this is our server on the right, and our client's on the left. So the server will go up first, he switches. Now the client comes up, he switches, and replication is working.